welcome to the Tumbleweed Podcast, where we discuss an eclectic range of topics, including business, design, Texas culture, and everything in between. We're two teachers that turned a side hustle into a nationally known apparel brand, and now we work with some of the biggest names in Texas. We strive to never stop exploring and continue to draw inspiration from our adventures. So drift and explore or raise a glass. We're always ready to hang out and talk about the things that we love. So come roll with us as we drift and explore. Hey, welcome to the Tumbleweed Podcast. Today I have two of my amazing co-workers. We have Sharon and Katie with us to talk shop about company culture, marketing, and how we do things here at Tumbleweed Textiles. How are y'all? Happy to be here. Happy to be featured in this podcast. Oh, yeah. I'm happy to be back. This is my first time. I'm a little bummed, though, because my better half, Hillary, unfortunately can't be here today. She was scheduled to be doing this podcast, but she's at home with my son, Zach, has a little flu cold going on. So it's, it's kind of a sad day in our house today. We'll just have to have her on the next one then. I know. I know. She's, she's definitely the better half, more eloquent speaker, uh, and she would have provided some great, valuable, uh, I guess, insight to how our company does what it does. She's been doing it with me since day one, 11 years ago. So uh, to get us started, you know, I just, you know, the the purpose of today's podcast is to kind of talk about the company culture from the perspective of the business marketing team. Of course, my business better half, Jeb Madelich, is sitting here teaching at school. Uh, They're at Liberty High School right now. So he's not here, but he will be coming uh, on the next podcast with our design team, uh, it's going to be the design talk from their perspectives. But uh, so, Katie, you've been with us a little while. Yes, I have. <laughs> and good or bad, I don't know. Good, but, bad, the ugly. But tell us a little bit about uh, kind of what you do uh, here at Tumbleweed Textiles. So here at Tumbleweed Textiles, I am the marketing director. So I oversee um, all the different sales channels so that refers to events, online, store, wholesale, um, and just like on everyday basis, I'm essentially a project manager at heart. I think that's the thing that I take on the most. And so I work with the design team. I work with all the different sales managers. I work with Brian on strategy of different projects. We always have stuff going on. So the, my plate is never, <laughs> like, my, sorry, my plate is always full. Yeah. So that's just kind of more of my everyday basis role. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, hopefully I don't inundate you too much. Um, <laughs> now, Sharon, what, what exactly do you do here at, at, uh, at the company? Well, I am our customer experience manager. So that means the customer experience as it relates to um, kind of all the different channels. But for me specifically, I do a lot of stuff with our online orders. So um, answering a ton of emails and phone calls and pretty much all interactions that customers have um, from online orders, that is really me yeah. communicating with them. Um, but then that also looks like uh, just hospitality in some different ways uh, with events we host, um, a lot of custom work, um, getting to be that um, account point of contact for different custom clients and stuff like that. So um, thinking of customers as, you know, the people that are kind of like the one-to-one um, people just buying online for gifts and stuff like that, but also for larger customers that might be buying for their whole company and stuff like that. Very cool. You do a lot of the things I am glad I no longer do. <laughs> uh, as you as you both know, at one point I touched exactly and did exactly what y'all do, uh, but I know Jeb and I and our team are very grateful that we're able to hand it off to two people that are far better at doing it than we are. <laughs> um they kind of get started a little bit more lighthearted. You know, I, I think here at Tumbleweed Textiles, um, people on social media get to see some of the fun things that we do. Um, behind the scenes, they don't see all of what we do and how hard we work. Um, but a question I have for you, Sharon, is, you know, what are maybe some experiences that you did not realize you're going to have? What are some of the fun experiences you got to be a part of since you've been a part of our company? Yeah. Gosh, since the beginning, I have gotten to be a part of a lot of different cool things, like um, events that we go to, events that we host, um, 
interactions with, again, like custom clients and uh, meetings with some very important people and stuff like that. Um, I think a lot of the stuff that we get to do, and again, that I've been a part of since the beginning, is stuff that a lot of times for most companies, I don't think people would really get to do until they're at like a vice president (laughs) type level. Um, So it's been really, really cool. Just the experiences that we've gotten to have, even like this year, being out at the state fair for the second time, um, our booth out there, I think, uh, lent us to get to go work out there, restocking, but also allowed us to get some corn dogs oh, and yeah. a couple uh, beers. couple beers and uh, just hanging around and stuff like that. So that was a really good work day for just a random Wednesday. Well, let me preface everyone on our team is over 21, I <laughs> promise right now. So um, what about you, Katie? What, what's uh, maybe an experience or something that since you've been on our team that you think was, uh, you know, a pretty cool opportunity. It, it, it could be an event like Sharon mentioned or just at any capacity, even in the office, uh, something that you really enjoy doing uh, here with our company. I'd have to say, of course, just picking backing off of some of what Sharon said, just the events, but also before coming to this job, I grew up in like a family that has a family business so I've always seen like the good the bad the ugly how much time you have to spend and how much sacrifice like my family made for our business but just the same thing goes for um Brian Jeb Hillary and um Jeb's wife but I also didn't realize how many cool things you get to touch with those experiences so it's if I were to work at another company here's no way that I would be touching all the things that I touch today Um, also just getting with it being a smaller business, having someone like Brian and Jeb, especially Brian in the marketing world to be such a good mentor to me. So I've learned so much. So it's not even just about the experience I've had. It's about kind of like the education that I've gotten in this role that I feel like I would be able to like go off and eventually maybe I can start my own business or just grow with this company as well. And so Um, I think just the experiences, the education that I've gotten and just all the events and all the clients that I get to meet and talk to. Let me preface, I promise, I did not (laughs) pay Katie to say that. Um, I'm honored that you said that. Um, You make it really easy to hopefully coach and mentor you uh, because Mm -hmm. you you work really hard. Everyone on the team knows your attention to detail and uh, your desire to do a good job and be disciplined at what you're doing. Um, so for both of y'all, you know, it's, you mentioned this about experiences that you don't think you would get to have and maybe in another environment or another company, you know, one of the things that is very important to me as the kind of the CEO leader role is to ensure that we're a family and part of a family. I grew up in my family. My parents are make everything extremely equal or has to be earned. And I say that because I want to make sure everyone on our team, just like I grew up with my family, um, has the opportunity to experience really cool things. And even to the extent going to a concert, you know, if I get to see the band playing one song, I'm going to go back to our booth to sell some shirts to send someone else to go listen to that band. Because I just want to make sure at the end of the day, y'all are completely apart and immersed in the culture of what we are about. And that's the, Mm -hmm. the music, the fun family. And so if we don't build that within our team, I feel like I'm hip- hypocritical, <laughs> uh, 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 you know, portraying that uh, in, in who we are, if I'm not actually living it out. So yeah. uh, from y'all's perspective, looking at the company culture that we have, you know, you mentioned some fun things that you get to do. Uh, what are maybe some harsher things that uh, you didn't realize? I mean, I run this kind of like a marketing agency, People think of us as a t-shirt brand and we are, but at the end of the day, we really are a glorified marketing agency that just happens to do a really good job of promoting and marketing and branding t-shirts and products. Uh, that, that, that means it's fast paced and a lot of work and a lot of sacrifice, a lot of potential hours after hours or before hours or the weekends. Um, but what are some surprises you had coming in? on the sacrifices or hardships you might have to face within your role uh, at, a, at a fashion brand or a company like that we have. Mm-hmm. I can go ahead and take this one. So um, 
I think definitely if you think about it, we are in the retail business. So it's just like with holidays, those are our busier seasons. And I know that goes for a lot of different businesses, but I think to just thinking about like all the events we do and how involved we are in the community, that obviously all that stuff does happen on like weekends or like they fall on holidays. So it's just allocating time to work those events. And at first I was a little more hesitant. I'd say like probably when you're going into a new role, knowing like how much additional work, there's no such thing as kind of like a 40 hour work week. It's always kind of like depends on like how much projects we have going on, how many events we have going on. But um, I think a big thing is just how many weekends we work. And I think talking about everyone on the team, I think, Brian, like you're there for every single event. You're there for every single like I remember when I first started working the store, you were there on the weekends. Like there weren't a lot of us actually being able to man the store. So it was just cool seeing how much time you um, designated for the business, which makes it kind of easy for us to also give up our time, seeing how much you and Jeb put so much time into the company. And so I think the biggest thing is with events and everything, you kind of have to expect to work more than 40 hours a week. But I've had so much joy and I've enjoyed like every week and I give up. Like I feel like I have more fun at events doing anything that I would just planned regularly. Not to say I have a boring life, <laughs> but the events are pretty fun and just... I get to like basically have free craft barbecue, beer. I get to go to concerts. Like this is my job, so it's pretty cool. No, that's uh, I, within the next week we're gonna get a lot of people trying to get job here. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, what about you, Sharon? Yeah, I think going off of that, um, that was one thing I was, I don't know, just yeah, in retail. I've worked in retail in the past. Um, worked for other companies where same thing, the seasonal. Uh, work of it all is a lot um so that was something yes we really do I mean I think that for me is what made the biggest difference is I was a little bit hesitant coming in um I don't know I just I didn't want to be like here every (laughs) no offense to the store but I didn't want to have to work you know every Saturday every Sunday and miss out on um you know fun stuff with friends and family and stuff like that but um, I think that's that's really the difference is because of the culture of our team, um, like what you mentioned, Brian, like you want this to be more of a family than anything else. And so I don't think I've ever actually had to miss anything for sake of work, really. Um, if it's a weekend where we have something going on just this last weekend, I was able to take a long weekend to be uh, back in Houston for some family stuff going on. So the rest of our team I think is just always flexible and willing and wanting to help each other out um, or we don't want each other to miss the important things in life, you know? So there is a lot of hard work and there are seasons where it's all hands on deck, but there's also more often than not a lot of flexibility to not miss out on the important stuff too. And I think it's funny because sometimes like my friends and family will ask me to do something on the weekends and I'm like, Oh no, I can't, like I have to work. And then they see on my social media that I'm at a concert or just, eating like I said eating barbecue drinking beer and they're like are you really working and I'm like yeah no this is work it's hard like don't worry. <laughs> yeah um so with that said like kind of leadership traits leadership styles uh things that y- y'all might have seen in myself uh Jeb our team what are maybe some pet peeves or lessons or <laughs> mottos that I drive home every day that separates tumbleweed from the other companies out there that allows us to flourish and have those cool experiences, Mm -hmm. have the great successes that we have. Um, Is there anything that you'd want to share with our listeners as maybe a lesson you've learned and then you can reshare that lesson to them? Yeah. You hate laziness. Um, (laughs) That's something I've learned. Um, And really just... second that. He definitely hates laziness. Hates laziness. So if you're listening to this and you're lazy probably not a good fit for you to come with you. <laughs> true, true. Um, excellence in everything. And I think there's a lot of uh, high expectations for things that we do, but there's also a lot of grace for when we mess up. So I don't know. I think that is probably the biggest thing I've learned, but having those black and white expectations make it really easy to know where you stand. Um 
I really don't ever have to wonder if you're happy or unhappy with me because I probably know if I messed up or didn't do something right. But there's open communication there to know where we stand and, again, to just acknowledge, hey, I messed up and can you help me make it right? <laughs> can, can you help me fix this? Yeah. And I think with those, with that such high expectation of excellence, I mean, that's definitely how the company has grown and how we've gotten here today. Um, but with those high expectations, you also lead by example. So it's like if you um, want us to achieve excellence, you're going to demonstrate demonstrate that every single day. I remember when I I think it was like my first second shift on this company. I was it was just you and me, and we were working the sales floor at the store. The store had just opened, and we were about to open the store. And you're like, okay, like I'm going to go clean the toilets, and you can go like open up the cash registers. And I remember that being so weird for me because all the other positions I've had before and jobs, like I do all the grunt work, like I'd be the one scrubbing the floors, sweeping up, and then you're over there cleaning the toilets. And I think honestly, that's probably the most gross thing <laughs> that like is on our to-do list when working the store. But I was just kind of like, wow, that's kind of, I just had so much like admiration for you because I was like, not a lot of like, let alone like managers, but like bosses and like CEOs, of the whole company, they won't be out there like scrubbing the toilet. That's something that, especially on my second day, like I would expect you to be like, hey, go scrub the toilets. But you just show so much like you don't expect anything more than what you wouldn't expect for yourself. And so I think that has really taught me a lot. And I think I react and like I think everyone on the team just appreciates that work effort and loss, that work ethic and just that leading by example that you mm-hmm. do like every single day. I think too, piggybacking off of that, I think a lot of people in the working world now, they don't really see past the exact position and the exact role and tasks yeah. that they're in. So it can be really easy to feel like, you know, what you're doing doesn't matter or it's not seen or this isn't really a job I want to be in, you know, three right. years from now, five years from now anyway. So what's the point? Um, and I think that's something really cool is not that that's why we work hard here, but hard work is rewarded in a lot of different ways where right. there's always eyes watching what you're doing. And so I would think even that's maybe a piece of advice just for anyone else listening who is maybe not thrilled in their job or doesn't necessarily see the point of the work that they're doing. It all matters. And that's something even now as we do have more part-time staff in store and the three of us really aren't on the sales floor near as, as frequently as we used to be. All of those things matter. All of the tasking matters. Um, And then now where Katie's a director, I'm a manager. We didn't just step into those roles day one. Like those were given over time of, being faithful and loyal in the tasks that were set before us originally. And so I think, um, I don't know, it's easy to feel like I want the success, you know, of 10 years down the road, but I don't want the grunt work put in now. But all of those things really matter. And I think help train us to where now, I don't know, there's other things that we're working on that we wouldn't have been interested with or honestly wouldn't have known quite how to handle, I think, if we didn't handle the smaller things well. So <clears throat> I'm a big believer that great things come with great sacrifice. Um, I actually mentioned this earlier today with our team, but Zig Ziglar, uh, which is actually from our area here in Texas, um, has a quote <clears throat> that, you know, good companies become great or the difference between good companies and great companies are though is the attention to detail. Um, I'm a big believer that things require sacrifice to achieve great things. <clears throat> and I'm a big believer that, um, those that give good attention to detail are going to be the one, those that surpass other people in, in job position, but also in fulfillment of their job. And I say that because, I mean, f- from being a teacher, from being a parent, being a coach, being an athlete, I was the kid back in high school that was in student council and leadership positions. Uh, the moral to success in all the stories in different ways is that the students – The kids, the teachers, the leaders, the players, those that worked hard, that practiced outside of normal practice, that gave their best in practice, um, those that went, uh, you know, spent extra time in doing things were always the ones that when it was game time, it was time to show up. They they came to play and they were the ones that were able to perform. And, you know, if you don't produce results, 
you're not going to move up in a company. Also, the company is not going to go any further yeah. than what it's at. Now, you know, I've always been told you're only as good as your weakest link. And so for our company, my goal is to show you by modeling behavior, my attention to detail, uh, my investment into this company, my passion for the company, whether it be time, my money, my finances, every aspect, bringing my kids to the store, making it like it's part of my family. Mm -hmm. My son thinks it's my second home. Um, <laughs> and, and if you see me do that, there's probably more likely of a chance that y'all will do that. And then if I it treat you like I would want to treat my kids or how I would want to be treated, then you're going to feel like this is your home and you're going to want to give back more than what you would normally do so as it is. Yeah. Um, and it's all about investment and it's your time. Uh, it's like you sharing, you know, half, half the people we have coming to work for us, you, you recommended to come work for us. <laughs> and it's because you obviously like what you do yeah. and you believe in it enough that you want your friends to come be a part of that family. Yeah. And so... <laughs> Uh, everything y'all are saying is, uh, you know, I didn't pay you to say it. I didn't ask you to say it, but as it comes to uh, company culture, I I'm really thankful that y'all are saying this is, um, you know, you love being part of the family and it's because of not just what we say we're going to do. It's because of what we do. It's what we stand for. It's the morals, the beliefs, the values. Um, and you can tell all your friends and family, that's really who we are, yeah. not who we say we are. Uh, we're as authentic as, uh, as I hope to be. Yeah. So, um, now for y'all, is there any questions you have for me that, you know, maybe you think listeners would really like to hear about as it relates to leadership or marketing, um, things that maybe open up perception of what we really do behind the scenes of our mm -hmm. social media and our website? Mm -hmm. I think what I have regarding marketing is before I came on the team, I think I just didn't realize how much work goes into strategy and usually i was thinking when i like first started my career i was like i want to do social media like that's what i want to do and in my perspective i was like oh it's just posting like a pretty picture and like making sure all the pictures align but coming on the team and just getting more experience with like internships and everything um i just realized how much strategy goes behind every single post how much strategy comes behind like all the emails so i guess my question for you is if you could just kind of like elaborate on the strategy that goes behind like all your marketing campaigns, like social media, like what goes through your head when you're putting it all out? Is there kind of a secret ingredient to the <laughs> recipe of success secret for social sauce. media and marketing? Man, it's, it's the ingredients. There's secret sauce. That's what the it is. the yeah, secret, secret sauce, sauce. Is, is Brian Weiss song. It's just being, uh, just being uh, Brian Weiss song. No, not really. You know, I, I think people are lazy and I think People tend to not think through things. They just take it as it is. And people don't understand there's a psychology or a consumer behavior, ele behavior element behind marketing, right? Marketing ultimately is the science of people. You know, uh, McKenna, uh, Jeb, Hillary, Fred, our amazing creative team, th they are absolutely incredible at creating things. But marketers, to me, are the creators of the plan and strategy, and the design is just one part element of that, right? And so first, you know, uh, when I'm thinking, let's say, holiday season launch, uh, Black Friday, let's say, Cyber Monday, first I want to back up and look at big picture and think, you know, lay out the, the three to four to five weeks prior, and, you, and then you look at elements, right? Like you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And you look at what new products do we have? What products do we want to liquidate? Because the true purpose of Black Friday is to liquidate product. It's to get rid of it so that people can go from debt to profit, yeah. you know, get out of the black. And so for us, it's looking at defining purpose. What are we trying to do? Well, we're trying to make money. We're trying to get out of debt. We're trying to sell certain products, certain products we want to carry into January, February. Okay, what what is the purpose of the store? What's the purpose of wholesale um, or online? My point is you stop and you take a big picture, look at everything and determine how do they all work together. Mm -hmm. Then what are my ways of communicating to all of my customers? And then you figure out the aesthetics. What's the best way to connect to those customers? Colors. Uh, are lines straight? Are they curved? Are you using textures? Or are you not? 
um, okay, how about this? Like if we want have a sale coming in two weeks, maybe we, we don't want to tell everyone about that sale today because we lose sales today. Mm -hmm. And so then it's looking at what's the prime time to launch a sale communication wise so that we can milk out as much sales as we can right now, today, tomorrow, whatever. And then we launch it like a big bang. And I kind of think like, like a military, grew up in a military family, you got the Air Force, the Marines, the Coast Guards, uh, the Navy, whatever, and they all have their part to the bigger plan. And so kind of going a long answer to get to the point is I lay out every idea, every potential way of connecting to the customer. I think of pathos, ethos, logos, emotion, strategy, ethics, whatever, and how to connect to them. And then I think about how what's the best way to visualize that? Like Christmas, it's like that Christmas vibe, Christmas theme. What kind of music do we listen to? What are the smells in our store we need? Nostalgia. Nostalgia. Yeah. And so I, I kind of build that picture in my head of how that person would be reached. And then we figure out what it looks like with our design team and photography. Mm -hmm. And then we figure out how we launch it in communication through social media, email marketing, advertisements, whatever. And so it's funny because people think, oh, you're doing a big sale. They don't realize all the planning and elements that go before yeah. that to figure out how to launch it effectively. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whereas most businesses would just say, hey, we're doing a sale. They, they post a picture from Canva or some PowerPoint, whereas we're using our actual design team that creates it. Uh, we're actually creating product for it, you know, for mm -hmm. that launch. Mm -hmm. um, so, it, you know, a holiday launch really started being planned, you know, three to six months prior to that. Yeah. Uh, and then delegating as a leader, it's like, okay, Sharon, this is your job. These are your roles. Katie, this is your job. These are your roles, design team. And then we mm -hmm. utilize systems like Asana, which is a project management system. And then it allows us to organize it and have due dates. And, you know, these are the sides of things that people don't see, but there's just so much that goes on behind the scenes to each campaign that we launch. Yeah. Um, you know, since you asked that, Katie... Sharon, I don't know if I was thorough with that. Anything you want to add on to kind of what I shared? Yeah, I think uh, like Katie said, it's more than just posting pretty pictures. It's not short of that, but it's a lot more than that. Um, even just kind of even on like the customer side of what they experience. Also, you know, emails and how you handle service. All of those things are yep. also in a way kind of a form of marketing. Um, it's all reaching the customer, all impacts sales and retention and all of those things. Yeah. So I don't know. It's interesting how that relationship with the customers is even impacted by marketing and yeah. all those things. Well, it's like you mentioned customer service. It's like, okay, let's let's do a sale today for glassware. Oh, wait, glassware takes longer to fulfill. You have to wrap it. Yeah. Well, do we have all of our supplies to wrap it? Do we have our supplies to package it and ship it? And if we're trying to get products to customers quickly, then it's like, okay, maybe we don't do that same sale on glassware because it takes longer and it costs more money to get out the door. Maybe we do the same sale, but only on t-shirts because it's quicker to fulfill. And then it's like, oh, wait, okay, because this takes longer, FAQs on our site. Uh, Sharon, you yeah. have to go in and update the copy on our website so that we inform our uh, mm -hmm. our cus customers so that they know, because our biggest thing is being authentic. We want to make sure we're transparent and customers know what they're getting. And if it's going to take longer to fulfill, they at yeah. least know about it and then they can make the choice accordingly. Yeah. And so, you know, one, one marketing strategy is, is going to have a million steps yeah. um, mm -hmm. from service to marketing, to design, to our music, to our store, our store windows, and it's also, it will affect wholesale. If we do a big sale, it's also going to affect our retailers. So maybe we give them free shipping prior to accommodate the the fact that we're doing, you know, a big sale. And yeah. mm -hmm. so there's just so many things. And that's why I say start from the top and you look at it from a bird's eye view and it requires someone with a visionary kind of mindset that can see all the potential threats. Yeah, It's kind of a SWOT analysis, the strengths, the weaknesses, the opportunities, the threats. And then delegate it out so that each team member that is good at what they do can execute on what they have. Mm -hmm. And then there's a project manager like Katie that can then make sure and ensure that everyone's doing it by the due date required. So that then the consumer has the ultimate best experience possible. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. There's so much uh, proactive work that goes into 
all things marketing, really. <laughs> Katie and I spend a lot of time even just going back and forth of how could this potentially, you know, impact service? How could this potentially be confusing to customers? Um, all of those things. And it's hard because there's some things that, you know, you can anticipate and you can do the best you can, but sometimes there's still questions and there's still issues that come up. But there's a lot of work on the back end of trying to make everything as smooth as possible um, when things are launched. Yeah. I think definitely with the role of marketing, you definitely have to be a great communicator. You have to be very detail oriented. And then I think that's just something that we've all had to learn. I mean, communication is hard and it's hard to communicate to a customer because you have to think of all the different alternatives. Like if you're doing a sale, you have to be able to communicate like, oh, this item's not included mm -hmm. or just all these extensive things that you didn't even think you had to think about till you're in this role. And you're like, I want to make sure the customer is well informed. I need to make sure my team's well informed. And then just like coordinating with all the different sales channels. And I think that's something that, like Brian said, he like is, well, I think he's so good at this. And I think everyone in our team knows that too, that he's really good at seeing the bigger picture. Cause I think sometimes like our team will be like, oh, like let's do this. And he comes back and he's like, well, did you think about this? And we're like, no, we did not. But yeah. I think that's what iron shop, uh, eh, sorry. Brian always says iron sharpens iron. And I think just going through like all these different sales we've done events each time that we do something new or we get exposed to like a new opportunity, I think, thinking back to old things we've done, we always take extensive notes. So like with Black Friday, we go back and we're like, what did we do last year? What worked? What didn't? Mm -hmm. What did our competitors do? And I think just having those notes and just being proactive about note taking like has helped us like make make each year better and make each sale better and make each customer experience better. Right. Yeah. We're always learning. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing is, you know, for, for those of you listening that might be uh, business owners, uh, brand curators, designers, uh, whatever it might be uh, in any industry. You know, it's, yeah, you might be really good at doing what you do, maybe selling insurance, maybe it's in law or medicine, but you always got to stop and understand and think through what is the purpose of what you're trying to do as it relates to being a business. What is your mission? What are your goals? Who, you're, who are you trying to reach? And the who is the target audience. And we think of target audience demographically, who are they? What do they look like? Where are they from? Where do they shop? Where do they eat? How do they think? Because then that truly then changes how you try to reach them from models to the design to the color schemes to even think of shopping. I mean, if you're selling kid cereal, you're going to put it lower on the shelf so it's a kid's eyes view. If it's an adult uh, one, you're going to put it eye level of the adult. I mean, where you put something directly affects the sales of what it is. And that's not just at a grocery store. That's also on your website. You know, people mm -hmm. look left to right, top to bottom. So if you have your most valuable product on the bottom left corner of your site, it's going to get overlooked. Uh, or you put it on the bottom right, they're more likely to see it and take action. Yeah. And so, you know, those are just small little elements, but as a business owner, you got to think through those things or hire someone that can think through those things <laughs> for you. Um, because at the end of the day, it's truly a science at trying to reach people and how to be effective. And that's why most businesses do tend to fail or tend to not have success is lack of attention to detail. And if you bring focus to that detail and as Sharon and Katie mentioned, constantly look at things and evaluate things and correct things and redefine and and continue to sharpen yourself and your team, then it all always ends up working out, uh, trying to not repeat the mistakes that you've made, but try to learn from those and move forward. Yeah. yeah. Um, I know we're getting close to the end of this podcast time, but I think very, very quickly, uh, I'm going to ask each one of you a question as it relates to your specific area. You know, we're talking about company culture, leadership, marketing, just all things of what we do on a daily basis. Uh, and this is ultimately for our, li li you know, listeners, our audience, um, helping business owners and designers and, um, and, and people better do what they do. And so for you, Sharon, and as it relates to service and customer experience, is there a, something that you've learned while being at Tumbleweed 
uh, maybe from one of my monologue lectures or <laughs> something you've learned or just an experience you've had um, that you would encourage other business owners uh, with their customer experience? Yeah. Something I've learned that I think really makes a great difference in the service that we give to our customers and um, what keeps them really coming back is that we always do our best to make things right and we will always do our best to be hospitable and to go above and beyond for our customers. But that is always out of a place of abundance and not weakness. Um, We never want to just be run all over um, when something, I don't know, by a customer who, um, you know, no matter what, what experience they've received, whether they, you know, somehow got a wrong item or something like that, we will always do what we can to make things right above and beyond to give them a great experience as best we can. Um, But again, that's from a place of being generous and uh, being hospitable, but not because like, yes, whatever, you know, whatever you need, we'll just give you a hundred million dollars or something, you know, to just try to make it right. Right. Um, I don't know. I think those things, it's like we can uh, do so because out, out of out of an abundance, I guess. I don't know. Out of wanting to make things right, uh, but not being run over by, you know, the air or run over by um, maybe a harsher customer or something like yeah. that. 100 percent. I like that. Um, people first always. Yeah. And that's our motto. I mean, yeah. people always will come first. Uh, whether it be our team or our customer. Yeah. Now for you, Katie, same same question, <laughs> but you know, if there's something you'd want to share with the other aspiring business owners, leaders, those that might be listening to this podcast today, um, specifically in project management and how to get shh done. <laughs> all right. Um, is there advice on processes or ways to be, you know, productive in that area? I think um, definitely staying on top of things. I think what I've learned most in project management is that communication is key. And so that's just kind of like communicating like what day you need things done, what like if it's a flyer, like communicating what day you need the first draft done, what day it needs to get sent to print, like what day and time you need it in your hands. Like there's never too much communication. I think definitely with like coordinating with so many different people on our team, like over communicating is always better because you'll never beat yourself up for over communicating. And I think that's where most issues in a lot of businesses are, is that communication is poor. And I feel like even for myself, that's something that I can improve on. But with getting stuff done, like I think you just have to communicate clear, like be black and white, like with every project you do and every project you manage. Yeah. Well, one thing I'll say about both of you is when I ask you to do something, not only do you do it, not only do you do it well, but you do it with care. Uh, you do it with diligence, discipline, uh, cred- your credibility is there with me because when you say you're going to do it, you do it and you do it well. Um, and that's kind of my, my, my feedback to those listening is be credible, be a credible human. Uh, if that's with your friends, with your family, with your employees, with your team, those people that are credible are the ones that say they what they they do what they say they're going to do. The opposite of credible is a hypocrite. You, you say you're going to do something you don't. You say you are someone that you're not. And I think if you're a credible human being in any aspect of your life, you're more likely to be seen as a leader, more likely to be trusted upon, asked, asked upon, and you're more likely to be successful. So just be the man, woman that you say you are Mm -hmm. in all things, put people first, do it with discipline and you're going to have a lot of success. So today, again, this, this was just kind of some fireside chat about (laughs) business, uh, about marketing leadership. Uh, We kind of showed up not fully prepared is kind of see what, where will we go with this and what content will will we talk about? And I think y'all provide some great information. So thank you both for being with us. Thank you all for listening, and uh, we are very grateful for you being a part of our podcast. And I do ask that you share this with your friends, share this with your coworkers, and help us spread the word about what we do here at Tumbleweed Textiles. Yep. Like, subscribe.
Thank you. Leave a review. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> Y'all have a great day. <laughs>